No, your eyes do not deceive you, I am indeed jumping right back into another Metal Gear challenge so soon after that forearm behemoth of a run. You need not worry about my crumbling sanity, I lost it long ago. But in an attempt to save what little is left of it, this will not be anywhere close to the size of the previous undertaking. For starters, this challenge only covers a single game, as this time we ask the simple question of, can you beat Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater without eating? A challenge that goes directly against the name of the game? You love to see it. So, for those unfamiliar, Snake Eater has some survival elements baked into its stealth espionage, just to give it a little bit of flair over the other entries. It's fairly basic stuff, you have a stamina gauge that you need to keep topped up by eating. The tastier the food, the more stamina is restored. Now, what does stamina actually do? Well, it keeps Snake in peak physical condition the higher it is. At max stamina, Snake suffers almost zero gun sway when aiming in first person mode, allowing for an easier time landing precise shots, as well as allowing him to sneak more efficiently, or so the game says, and perhaps most importantly of all, the more stamina you have, the faster your health recovers. As the stamina bar drains, as you might expect, Snake has a harder time keeping his hand steady, recovers far less health to the point of not recovering at all, and once it drops below half, his stomach will periodically growl, which can actually alert enemies to your position. Yes, I am being completely serious about that last one. Now, it is possible to find a rare item known as life medicine, which will heal a portion of your health regardless of your current stamina, but as an added challenge, I decided that I wouldn't use them either. Just thought it would make things a little bit more interesting. Now, with all that out of the way, let's begin. Unlike our last foray into the Metal Gear universe, I am allowed to skip cutscenes this time, as they have no bearing on the run itself. That said, I do still watch a few of them, because I just can't help myself. First thing I need to do once I'm in control is of course get my gear back, which is as simple as slithering my way up this tree and falling on top of it. As soon as I do, I make sure to unequip everything in my backpack for my quick items that isn't the Trank Pistol. This is because every item in your quick inventory has a weight value attached to it, the higher that number is, the faster your stamina drains. Granted, it shouldn't matter much as of right now as we are in the prologue and our stamina will regen between the end of this mission and the start of the main story. As for now, I briefly get beaten up by a crocodile and then proceed on to some actual human based stealth encounters. Stealth is of course the name of the game, but it is also entirely optional for the most part. For now, I just play how I normally would, slowly creeping through the brush and using the first person aiming to land instant knockout headshots to deal with enemies before I'm even within their sight. Yes, again, I am going non-lethal for the most part. We'll see how long that lasts. Making it to the next area, and this really just serves as a mini tutorial as we follow up from Snake's shit-eating grin by testing the limits of lethality as we hope none of these soldiers has a deadly bee sting allergy. Is it bee sting allergy, or is it just bee allergy? Well, I don't know, feel free to let me know in the comments, and while you do that, I will effortlessly put all of Sukolov's guards down for a nap and rescue the man himself for the first of two times today. S sort of. This is where I would have the encounter with the Ocelot unit, but due to me skipping the cutscene, all we see is Snake standing over Ocelot's snoozing body. As of right now, I have been playing for about maybe 10 minutes, and as you can see, my stamina bar is already starting to decrease. While stealth results in less opportunities for me to take damage, and therefore meaning I won't have to worry about the lack of healing from my stamina, it will also take longer than running through most encounters, which of course, the longer I take doing anything, the more stamina I will ultimately lose. I will need to try and find a delicate balance between the two if I don't want to run out too fast. Following the screams and cries of Sokolov, we are led back to the bridge, where the boss defects and joins up with a lightning rod posing as a human, along with spider bob fear pants and a living hornet's nest. With absolutely no time to assess the situation, Snake's arm is broken and we are left to glue it back together again. After one of the main plot points is shown and quickly glossed over, Snake discovers his love of the Fulton system and now it's time for the main mission and for this run to start properly. As soon as we are back in the jungle, our only gun is dismantled by the boss, leaving us mostly defenseless. I say mostly as CQC is still a thing, but more importantly for right now is the five stun grenades that I also have in my back pocket. As mentioned, stealth isn't entirely necessary, so running straight for the approaching guards and blinding them with flashbangs to progress as fast as possible isn't even the worst idea. The soldiers patrolling the bridge where we took our first diving lessons earlier are easy enough to dispatch with the ever satisfying CQC slam. And from there I meet up with Eva, have a snooze and then get to dealing with the Ocelot unit. Thanks to Eva we now have some actual guns, so I equip the Mark 22 and begin dispatching the enemy. 
I slip out onto the floorboards until I'm outside of the room where Sukolov once was, and as soon as I'm able, I take out the sniper perched on top of the roof. The amount of times I forget about him is shocking, which will normally result in me getting spotted. Speaking of triggering an alert, while I do manage to crawl under this section of the wall and take out this soldier without anybody noticing, once I get out in the open, I was spotted pretty fast. No way around it, this was entirely my bad for not keeping an eye on my surroundings while focusing on some of the other backup who were near the exit. That said, this sped the encounter along nicely as two of the remaining three had no choice but to rush me as I took cover behind this tree, which of course led to them getting a free grass inspection. As for the last man, well he was quickly sorted out with three well placed tranks to the torso. With that done and dusted, it's onto the swamp. It's a short section, but one I was dreading all the same. And no, it's not because of the instant kill crocodiles. Rather, it was the blood sucking leeches that infested the water. Once a leech latches on, the only way to get rid of it is with a lit cigar, which is simple enough to do by the way in the survival viewer, as a cigar is the one healing resource that Snake has an infinite amount of. The problem is, despite the fact they suck blood, they actually rapidly deplete your stamina rather than your health. This coupled with the fact that I am purposely slow swimming through most of the lake as to avoid using too much stamina, and well, I think you get the idea. One leech attached itself to me rather quickly, and as soon as I noticed, I burned it off. This also made me slightly paranoid, and had me checking a survival viewer every few feet, just to keep an eye out for any other unwelcome squatters. I consider myself lucky that I only had to deal with one of them this time. It honestly could have gone so much worse. The area following the swamp is a complete cakewalk. Sure, the traps and dogs seem intimidating, but unless it's a pitfall trap, you can just crawl under slash over them, and the dogs themselves can be put to sleep like any other creature. Sure, they don't stay asleep for as long as people, but it's more than enough time for me to hop through this fence, take out the remaining guards, and transition to the next area. The entirely optional base camp is up next, and despite me wanting to get a move on as fast as possible, that still didn't stop me from taking out all of the guards, looting the base of all its supplies, as well as blowing up its comms, food, and weapon storage buildings. Along with the hind, which should help me later. Once I was done here, it was straight into the first boss fight, with Ocelot. While not going for a full non-lethal playthrough, I still choose to fight the bosses this way. For boss fights like Volgan and the boss, it's simply due to it being more efficient, as you can do a good chunk of stamina damage to them as well with CQC. As for Ocelot here, well truth be told, I just want the camo that I get if I win the fight by depleting the stamina. There is nothing too special about the fight this time, I didn't even really get to trigger any of the unique moments, other than the quick draw duel near the end of the fight. I will say it did go smoother than last time, if for nothing else, I remember to actually make use of the third person auto aim when he was out in the open, instead of just trying to rely on first person aiming, which, while effective, leaves you unable to move while you line up your shots. As for why I specifically wanted his camo though, simple, when it's equipped, you have reduced gun sway regardless of your current stamina. This will be handy for boss fights going forward, but on the other hand, other than when I'm in the mountains later, its camo rating is kinda bad, so I am likely to be spotted a lot if I wear it too often. You'll be glad to know that I remembered to grab the thermal goggles this time, so I'm not stumbling around completely clueless this time during the cave section. Also, thanks to the comments on the previous Metal Gear video, I now know that if you just wait around in the cave for 10 minutes, Snake's eyes will auto adjust to the darkness and I'll be able to see around the area more clearly. If I wasn't worried about the amount of stamina that it would cost me, I would 100% have tried it for this video. With a combination of the map and heat signatures of all the nearby crabs, it wasn't long before I was able to find my way out of the cave and straight into the boss battle with B-Boy. Like always, he is probably the easiest boss. At least Ocelot had cover to hide behind, this guy is just standing out in the open. Sure, he can sacrifice his hornet brethren to act as a shield, but a single explosive is more than enough to make them question their loyalty and allow me to continue laying on the pain. <laughs> sorry not sorry. With him dead, it's time for more swimming as I attempt to sneak past some of the flying platform thingies. Well, it doesn't exactly work due to me being kind of impatient today, but not to worry, so long as I can land headshots, they will go down just like any other standard enemy. To do something a little different, I decide to slightly venture off the beaten path as I make my way into this optional area. There is another weapon storage here, but we are not so interested in blowing this one up. No, more so, we are here to grab the sniper rifle that they have so carelessly left just lying around. Anyone who has played Snake Eater before knows exactly what is about to happen. As he is not the main focal point of the run this time around, along with his boss fight being a near death sentence for my stamina due to his non-lethal stamina draining sniper, I am choosing to get rid of the end right now before his boss fight. This is simply done by entering the next main area, equipping our new SVD, carefully lining up our shot, and then unload all of our bullets into the end and the surrounding soldier. 
It only takes two headshots to kill him here, and seeing how he appears to have no iframes, you can very quickly double tap him for the confirmed kill. While I took out the rest of the guards, one of them was fast enough to activate his radio, sending in an extra unit to assess the situation. I probably would have had time to take him out if the end's wheelchair didn't come packed with a sense of vengeance and home in on Snake as one final FU from the old man. The reinforcements were literally just two guards with shields, both of which I was able to knock out with no hassle. I grab all the goodies in the area, the most important of which is the night vision goggles, and then made my way inside the nearby building. All three of the guards occupying the building can be taken out from the entrance, so long as you position yourself correctly, allowing me to steal more supplies to my heart's content. I also blew up another food storage unit. Snake is a bitter individual, so if he can't eat, then nobody can eat. Back out into the jungle ever so briefly, and for the one and only time in this run, I use my lethal pistol to kill a poison dart frog. This is of course not for me to eat, as that goes against the entire run, even though if I did eat the frog, it would do more harm than good. No, this is just in case I needed to distract the fear for his boss fight in a few minutes. For now though, I need to sneak into the lab, which is easily done by sticking to the left hand side of the facility. It has less guards patrolling the outside area, plus I can crawl through this vent here to end up directly in the middle of the base. I of course also equip my scientist disguise, as I don't feel like running and gunning my way through. However, running and smoking my way through, yeah, that works. Making it to Granin and getting the card is simple enough, and I figured the return journey would be just as easy, but for whatever reason, I got spotted. This felt a bit cheap, like I knocked out the scientist who spotted me, but one of the others in a completely different room activated the alarm and called in the guards. It's not a huge deal as I get past them all with a combination of the knockout gas and slamming the door in one dude's face. Once all the guards downstairs are sleeping, the alert ends and I can go back to walking around the facility with no repercussions. I leave the area the exact same way that I got in as I essentially just retrace my steps all the way to where I killed that frog, as that's now the fear stomping grounds. As soon as the fight begins, I pop the fake death pill, probably making the fear think that I died of the poison from the Brazilian wandering spider. Fun fact about that particular poison, it has a... another side effect that the fear forgets to mention. He may be naked snake, but he's sure as hell becoming solid. Anyway, I take the pill so that he investigates my pretending corpse, and then once he believes me to be dead, he will turn around and not face snake. Once this happens, I take the revival capsule and then throw two stun grenades to freeze him momentarily while I land a few shots on him with the Mark 22. It's enough to take away one bar of stamina, which will help speed along the fight. Normally, you would abuse this method on New Game Plus, as rather than the pistol, you can actually use the boss's Patriot to make very short work of his entire stamina bar within like two seconds. I cannot do that of course, so instead I just equip my thermal goggles and have the fight play out as it normally would. He eventually comes down from the trees to find food, and as soon as he does, I toss the dead frog as he will automatically pick up whatever the closest food is to him whenever he needs to eat. I also noticed here that when he is searching for food, his stamina cannot be completely drained. I noticed this because I kept landing shot after shot on him and he was making his injured sound to indicate that they were connecting, yet it never went any lower. Well, fortunately, he did eat that stupid frog, and then I quite literally kicked his ass. Oh. <laughs> With him down, the only member of the Cobra unit left is the Fury. We do still have to pass through what would have been the End's boss arena, mind you, only now it is filled with members of the Ocelot unit. Seeing how we didn't kill the ones during our first encounter, it's likely these are the same people looking for a rematch. Just like when fighting the End, good use of thermal goggles makes this segment a complete breeze. That said, CQC is now out of the question, as my stamina has reached the stage where Snake's stomach starts grumbling. To be fair, I probably wasn't going to get close enough to any of them anyway, as the weapon swaying was so atrocious by now that I would be a fool to not keep the animal's camel on whenever needing to knock out enemies. To be honest, I don't even know if you have to take out the entire unit. Normally, the end's weird bond with the plant life in the area is what's causing the entrance to the mountains to be blocked off by vines. But with him already taken care of, the way is already open. That said, I did take them all out. Why? Simply put, I love this game, and I thoroughly enjoy any chance I get to play it. Some of you may be wondering why I didn't just fight the end normally, considering that that way I could have snuck up on him and got the moss camo, which, when in direct sunlight, regenerates your stamina through photosynthesis. Honestly, that's a great question, and I don't really have an answer other than my aforementioned reasoning of the time investment of the fight potentially being worse for my overall stamina. 
Anyway, here is the ladder climbing sequence that everyone likes to remind you of in Elden Ring of all things. Up to the mountains now and the game likes to warn you that you're going to lose stamina even faster due to there being less oxygen this high up. Wonderful. Good news though, I don't really notice any of the adverse effects here as I'm wearing the animal's camo anyway as it's the best one that I have for blending into the rocky environments. The steady aim and open areas are my friends and allow me to easily pick off any soldiers from a distance with ease. There are more of the floating guard platforms in this area, apparently this would normally be occupied by a hind, but because I destroyed it at the base earlier, they are here instead. This also answers my question from the marathon, as I was under the impression that the hind you blow up at the base was the one that you see flying around the area where you meet Eva again, but apparently that is the second hind, and the one you take out at the base is the first hind that is usually at the start of the mountains, so in other words, me blowing up the hind in the other video did work. It wasn't a glitch. So that's good to know. I can't believe I never knew there were two of them though. Did I say two? Sorry, I meant none. Stop. Meeting Eva yet again, we get noodles that we cannot use and the one-way ticket to a boss fight with a fury. This is where my lack of stamina really showed how annoying it was becoming. Being as low as it was, my health recovery was essentially non-existent. Combine that with the fact that the fury tends to give me some trouble and this first attempt was a complete joke. Now, to be fair, I was also trying for the lethal approach in this attempt, as I thought the sniper from before would be a faster alternative than taking out his stamina with a Mark 22. While it may do more overall damage per shot, the fact that you cannot move with it at all ended up making it more of a hindrance than a solution. Needless to say, this resulted in my first death. Stamina does not refill when you restart by the way, so rejoice, I am still malnourished snake. Next time it was back to Old Faithful, and I don't know if it's just down to me being more comfortable with this playstyle or good RNG, but this was by far the easiest time I have ever had with this boss fight. Yes, he still set me ablaze on more than one occasion, but by taking my own advice for a change and making use of the third person aiming more than the precision of the first person, I was able to output a more consistent form of damage. It didn't take long for me to come out on top, and now it's time for our quick tour of Groznygrad. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, so I apply my splitter camo and sneak my way over to the nearby truck and use the cardboard box to have me delivered into the base. Once Snake has been signed for, I don my scientist disguise once again, locate the major, and with the power of Snake Vape, can knock him out with the overwhelming smell of cherries and drag his body to a nearby locker and steal his clothes. Using the uniform in conjunction with the anti-Senator Armstrong mask, we can get past the security and meet up with Sokolov one final time before he gets kneecapped. Sokolov is then killed by Volgan and we are tossed in prison and, shocking to me, we now have regained some of our stamina. I suppose that this happens because the game wants to show the player that Snake is injured and as such they reduce his stamina to half. But of course, in our case where we were well below half, this technically helps us out quite a bit. I make sure to dig out the tracker so we don't have to deal with the Ocelot unit for a third time and then get to work breaking out of the cell. I just go about this the simplest way possible. As Johnny is patrolling the cells, I just wait until his back is to me and as soon as it is, I enter the codec frequency 144.75, which unlocks the door, and then I book it for the sewers. I have no weapons, equipment or camo, and I cannot use CQC. Sure, taking things slow is the way to go, but to hell with that, I just run right down the middle of the base without a care in the world, I am faster than the dogs after all, and it seems that the soldiers can't land a shot to save their lives. After a stylish backwards somersault, we land right into our next boss fight, the Sorrow. Nothing really to say here, you walk forward for a couple of minutes until you've shaken hands with everyone you've ever killed before the game says stop. Coming to with 100% water in his lungs, we make our way for what else but more water. We meet up with Eva yet again and she's probably taking notice that we never ate those noodles and as such she forces us to eat one of our own. This doesn't count by the way, this is in a cutscene, it's not the actual game. That said, however, when Snake wakes up the next morning and it's time to start playing again, our stamina has in fact fully recovered. Huh. Considering how little there is left of the game, the likelihood of our stamina ever dropping to dangerous levels again, even without eating, is very low. So the challenge is all about complete I guess, but for the sake of things I will very quickly go over the final section of the game for those who want to see how it went. Just like before, I sneak back into Grozny Grab with the power of box technology and then grab the maintenance and sneaking suits from the lockers, the former of which allows me to plant the C3 on the liquid fuel tanks without being discovered, and the latter which allows me to take less damage. Not that it really matters as the three upcoming boss fights barely hurt me. First up is Colonel Volgan. 
While he may seem intimidating with his lightning powers, staying relatively close to him and just circling around until he's finished gives you the opportunity to slam him into the ground and follow up with a few tranquilizers for some quick and easy damage. This works for the second phase of the battle as well by the way, only this time you need to watch out for his AoE bullet explosion, which can just be avoided by lying down so it's not a big deal. For some extra easy emotional damage, feel free to slip on the Raiden mask and confuse Volgan into thinking he's fighting Rykov. This essentially allows you to get in one free hit, or in my case, slam and shoot. This leads to the motorcycle chase and all you need to know about both sections is that you have infinite ammo and I really stopped caring about going non-lethal. As for the fight with the Shagohot itself, well first phase I just shoot the treads and the back of the machine with the RPG as you're told to do. There's not a lot of room for individual player input here, it's a pretty straightforward fight. As for phase 2 when Vulcan gets out and takes control though, well this is actually even faster. Once again just shoot the treads and that makes Vulcan vulnerable. Normally I would just blast him with the RPG here as I am already holding it, however if you switch to your sniper rifle and manage to land a headshot you can take out half of his health in one go. This makes it a lot faster than using the rockets, so after you've disabled the treads for the second and final time, line up one final headshot and the colonel will be toast. Almost literally in fact. After the second bike segment we have to escort Eva through a small forest before the final boss boss. I would say that all of the Resident Evil 4 that I've been playing lately has prepared me for this, but truth be told, Eva can more than defend herself with that revolver that I gave her. Alrighty, time for the final boss, and as I have said previously, once you understand that all you have to do is press the CQC button when the exclamation mark appears, then you're going to win this fight. By staying far enough away from the boss you can essentially bait her into rushing you down, so she has to close the gap, which almost always leads to her attempting to grapple you, and, you guessed it, leading to a successful counter on your part. Once she is on the ground just follow up with two more shots and then retreat to a safe distance and rinse and repeat. For an added bonus you can wear the snow camo to easily vanish from her sight which makes it so much easier to just straight up shoot her during the fight while she is searching the field for you. After about 4 minutes the boss is defeated, I choose the correct gun during the Russian roulette sequence, opt to not fire the gun, finishing the game and proving yes you can indeed beat Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater without eating. So that ended up being a hell of a lot easier than I thought. I figured the drawbacks of low stamina would be a lot worse, but apparently not. Oh well, I still got to play through Snake Eater again so that makes me happy. For anyone wanting to know, here are my final stats. They're not all that great as to be expected considering how early in the run I gave up on trying to be stealthy. Also I killed a lot of people during that bike sequence. Regardless, that's going to be in this challenge video. If you enjoyed what you saw, consider giving the video a like. And if you're interested in more challenges in the future, feel free to subscribe to one of these videos every week. My name is Nerbit. Stay safe, everyone. I'll see you all in the next video.